Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamsid Jaman, Professor of Pathology. I welcome all in today's fifth lecture on hematology. In the fourth lecture, I have told you about macrocytic and megaloblastic anemia. Today, aplastic anemia and pancytopenia. First, come to aplastic anemia. Then, Pancytopenia. First, come to what we mean by about aplastic anemia. Definition: Anemia due to hypoplasia of marrow is called aplastic anemia. Is called aplastic. Anemia. So, anemia due to hypoplasia of bone marrow is called aplastic anemia. It is also called hypoplastic anemia. <coughs> also called hypoplastic anemia. The audience. Now come to if we consider bone marrow. Suppose bone marrow. We know in bone marrow half of marrow is fat cell and half of marrow is hemopoietic elements. So in normal bone marrow, half is fat cell and half is hemopoietic element. So if you consider this is the bone marrow in a slide, in a slide, in a bone marrow in a slide. So if this is the fat space or fat cells, in between this, these are the marrow elements. These are the marrow elements. So if you consider in marrow elements red one, these are the marrow elements. So these space is the fat, space for the fat, fat, around this, these are the hemopoietic elements. And we know from the hemopoietic elements, cells, RBC series, WBC, platelet, all are produced from the hemopoietic element. If hypoplasia of the bone marrow occurs, if hypoplasia of bone marrow, what happens in hypoplasia? In case of hypoplasia, hemopoietic element is reduced. So, in hypoplasia of marrow, what happens? The decreased or reduced hemopoietic element. Reduced hemopoietic element. So, if reduced hemopoietic element, what will happen? If you consider this is the bone marrow and medullary cavity and bone, and this medullary cavity contains the bone marrow, and if there is hypoplasia within the marrow, there will be diminished or decreased hemopoietic element. What will happen? There will be decreased RBC production, and there will be decreased WBC production and decreased platelet production. So all three will be reduced in aplastic anemia. So how hemopoietic element is may be decreased in hypoplastic anemia? It may be due to increased fat cell. If the fat cell is increased, there will be decreased hemopoietic element. Or other words, if there is fibrosis in the bone marrow, there will be decreased in hemopoietic element. So there are a lot of causes of decreased hemopoietic element. One is increased fat, another is bone marrow fibrosis. And if there is decreased hemopoietic element, RBC, WG platelet or will be decreased. So, aplastic anemia is characterized by. So, aplastic anemia. is characterized by 
if rbc is reduced characterized by anemia if wbc is reduced characterized by leukopenia if platelet is reduced characterized by thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia i have come to if anybody suffers from aplastic anemia what may be clinical presentations now come the clinical presentations of aplastic anemia clinical presentations of aplastic anemia due to anemia there will be symptoms of anemia symptoms of anemia like pallor like effort intolerance effort intolerance palpitation fatigue these are the symptoms of anemia then due to leukopenia what will happen due to leukopenia due to leukopenia there will be frequent infection and due to frequent infection there will be frequent fever so frequent fever due to frequent infection and this frequent infection is due to leukopenia and if there is thrombocytopenia what will happen there will be bleeding manifestations bleeding manifestations due to thrombocytopenia bleeding manifestations like nasal bleeding gum bleeding purpuric spot parietal bleeding so these are the different clinical presentations in aplastic anemia now come to how can we classify aplastic anemia or how can we know the different causes of aplastic anemia now come to causes of aplastic anemia again we recall in aplastic anemia the hemopoietic element of bone marrow is reduced the cause may be idiopathic in most of the cases the cause of aplastic anemia is not known so it is idiopathic aplastic anemia then secondary secondary aplastic anemia aplastic anemia due to certain diseases aplastic anemia due to certain diseases it is called secondary aplastic anemia what are those it may be due to administration of drugs due to administration of certain drugs that drugs may cause depression of bone marrow and so there is aplastic anemia what are those drugs like chloramphenicol chloramphenicol anti cancer drugs there are days you know patient bearing cancer if patient is given chemotherapy after getting chemotherapy there is chance of development of aplastic anemia then radiation the radiation you no know, cancer bearing patient gets radiotherapy after getting radiotherapy patient may develop 
aplastic anemia. So radiation in cancer bearing patient, radiotherapy. Following radiotherapy, there is chance of development of aplastic anemia. Then chemical exposure. Certain chemical exposure may lead to aplastic anemia. Then infective hepatitis. There are days you know if anybody suffers from hepatitis caused by virus C, he or she may come to you with pancytopenia. And if you investigate that case, you can get aplastic anemia, patients suffering from hepatitis caused by virus C. These are the secondary aplastic anemia. The third one is constitutional. The example of constitutional aplastic anemia, example is inherited inherited defect in DNA repair. In DNA repair. Inherited defect in, in DNA repair. Example example of <coughs> inherited defect in DNA repair, Fanconis syndrome. Fanconis syndrome. So in Fanconis syndrome, patient develops aplastic anemia and it is nothing but inherited defect in DNA repair. Dear audience, you know our DNA undergo damage and there is system in our body to repair that damaged DNA by certain enzymes. If there is any defect in the repairment of this damaged DNA, the DNA will not be repaired. And if DNA is not repaired, there is a disease, it is called chromosomal breakage syndrome. Again, if, suppose, if this is the DNA, suppose this is DNA, this DNA undergo damage, damage like in bright light, in bright light. If we exposed in bright light, there is damage of DNA. Again, you come back to dream light, the damaged DNA and will be repaired. So, there is mechanism, there is system, there is enzymes to repair the damaged DNA in our body. If there is defect in the DNA repair, if there is defect in the repair, the DNA will be repaired and there will be disease that is called chromosomal. This is called chromosomal breakage breakage syndrome. Again recall if damaged DNA is not repaired automatically in our body, this is a disease and this is called chromosomal breakage syndrome. And this chromosomal breakage syndrome contains this includes ataxia telangiectasia, geroderma pigmentosum, Bloom syndrome and Fanconis syndrome. So Fanconis syndrome is nothing but one of the chromosomal breakage syndrome. So what happens in Fanconis syndrome? What happens in Fanconis syndrome? This Fanconis syndrome is characterized by or associated with aplastic anemia. It is associated with aplastic anemia. Then there is abnormal function of the proximal convoluted tubules of the nephron. Abnormal function of proximal convoluted tubule of nephron. As there is abnormal function of the convoluted tubule in the nephron, what will happen is there is polyuria there will be osteomalacia, etc. So this is the Fanconis syndrome in brief. Now come to the other days, if anybody suffers from aplastic anemia, how to diagnose aplastic anemia in laboratory. 
Now come to laboratory diagnosis of aplastic anemia. So, laboratory diagnosis of aplastic anemia, or this is laboratory diagnosis of hypoplastic anemia. First, we have to do blood examination. Then, bone marrow examination. Bone marrow examination. First, come to blood examination. First, come to blood examination for aplastic anemia. We have to do first hemoglobin estimation. As it is anemia, it will be decreased. We have to do ESR. It will be very high, very high ESR. Then we have to do TLC, total leukocyte count. As it is aplasia or hyperplasia, total leukocyte will decrease. There is leukopenia. It is leukopenia. Then we have to do DLC. It is normal distribution. Then we have to do bleeding time. Every patient come to you with bleeding manifestations. So we have to do bleeding time and clotting time. As there is thrombocytopenia, bleeding time will be prolonged. This is then prolonged bleeding time. Then we have to do clotting time or coagulation time. It will be normal. As there is platelet decreased, no defect or deficiency in the coagulation factor, so clotting time is normal, bleeding time is prolonged. Then we have to do peripheral blood film. We have to do peripheral blood film. First come to RBC series. RBC series. Cells are normocytic and normochromic. The audience will know in case of aplastic anemia, acute hemorrhagic anemia, multiple myeloma, we get the normocytic, normochromic RBC. That is MCB, MCH, MCIC are normal. So here we will get cells are normocytic and normochromic. But population of RBC is decreased. So population of RBC in the peripheral blood film decreased. So population of RBC in peripheral blood film is seen decreased. Now come to WBC series. WBC series. WBC series cells are mature but show leukopenia. Cells are mature but cells are show leukopenia. Then platelet. Platelet seen decreased. In the film. That film we have stored it in the film, the population of platelet is decreased. So this is the peripheral blood film findings. Now come to bone marrow. Now come to bone marrow examination. Now come to bone marrow examination. The audience you know in bone marrow, we see the cellularity, 
we see the myeloid related issue, related process, general process, and mega cell will play, etc. And I have told you initially in this lecture in aplastic anemia or hyperplastic anemia, hemopoietic element is reduced. So as hemopoietic element is reduced, so cellularity will be hypocellular. So marrow is hypo. Cellular. So, if you consider the bone marrow, if you consider the bone marrow here, like this, medullary cavity, and this is the fat, this is the fat, this is the fat, and if red one is the marrow element, as the marrow element is decreased in hypoplastic anemia or aplastic anemia, so there will be a hypocellular marrow. So, marrow is hypocellular with normal myeloid erythroid ratio. Why erythroid and myeloid ratio normal? Because I have told you as there is decreased amount of hemopoietic element, all the series RBC, WC, plate, all series cells are reduced. So there is normal myeloid erythroid ratio. So marrow is hypocellular with normal myeloid erythroid ratio. Now come the erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is depressed but normoblastic. What it means? As marrow elements is decreased, so there will be decreased erythropoiesis depressed. But whatever, uh, whatever may be the amount of synthesis of RBC, the erythropoiesis is normoblastic. The nuclear cells are normally produced or normoblast. Then dermopoiesis. The series from which the granulocytes are produced, these are granulopoiesis. So granulopoiesis is depressed with all stages of maturation. What it means? As there is hyperplasia decreased hemopoietic element, RBC series depressed, that is erythropoiesis is depressed. So WB series granulopoiesis is also depressed. Well, although it is depressed, the cells that are synthesizing or that are producing, there will be all stages of resolution of the granulopoiesis. Then megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte seen reduced. Megagrosserine reduced. No parasite found. No parasite found in the marrow examined. So this is the bone marrow findings of aplastic anemia and this is all about the aplastic anemia. Dear audience, now come to pancytopenia. First come to definition of pancytopenia, you know pan means whole, pan means whole, all, cyto means cell, penia means decreased. Now come to what is the definition of pancytopenia? In pancytopenia RBC, WC, platelet all are decreased. So definition is simultaneous. Presence of anemia, <coughs> leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. So, simultaneous presence of anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia is called pancytopenia. So in pancytopenia RBC is decreased, so there is anemia and there is decreased 
WBC that is called leukopenia and there is decreased platelet and that is called thrombocytopenia so in pancytopenia all the three elements that is all three elements is decreased now come to causes of pancytopenia causes of pancytopenia the causes of pancytopenia may be a plastic anemia a plastic anemia is or the important cause or important cause of pancytopenia then subleukemic subleukemic acute leukemia subleukemic acute leukemia then administration of drug administration of drug so administration of drug is also associated with pancytopenia audience the cancer bearing patient when gets anti cancer drug usually they develops anemia leukopenia and thrombocytopenia that is they develops pancytopenia so before giving chemotherapy and after giving chemotherapy whether the patient is suffering from pancytopenia or not complete blood count is done like anti cancer drug like anti cancer drug then radiation that is given in cancer bearing patient as radiotherapy then bone marrow infiltration or bone marrow replacement or marrow replacement dear audience i have told you marrow is composed of half marrow element that is hemopoietic element and half is fat fat cells if marrow is infiltrated or marrow is replaced then there will be decreased rbc production decreased wbc production and decreased platelet production so there will be pancytopenia what are the causes of bone marrow infiltration or bone marrow replacement so bone marrow replacement or bone marrow infiltration may occur in in number 1 multiple myeloma you know multiple myeloma or myeloma it is the malignant neoplasm of cancer of plasma cell it is the malignant neoplasm of plasma cell you know this is the plasma cell eccentric nucleus cartilage appearance this plasma cell produces antibody you know this plasma cell in the bone marrow produce a develop a cancer that is called myeloma or multiple myeloma like this so myeloma or myeloma is the cancer of plasma cell if this cancer occurs in the bone marrow there will be disturbed marrow and there will be decreased rbc wc platelet production so this is one of the cause of bone marrow infiltration or replacement number 2 metastatic tumor of bone if anybody suffers from cancer either in the lung breast prostate etc if this cancer metastasize in the bone it will disturb the bone marrow and there will be decreased rbc wc platelet production so there will be pancytopenia in metastatic tumor of bone myelofibrosis fibrosis there are dense you know again it equal marrow normal marrow composed of half fat cell and half 
hemopoietic element if there is fibrosis within bone marrow there will be reduction of production of rbc wc platelet and it will lead to pancytopenia and the another cause of pancytopenia is hypersplenism hypersplenism so aplastic anemia sub leukemic liquid leukemia administration of, of drug like anti cancer drug radiation bone marrow infiltration hypersplenism all are the causes of pancytopenia dear audience now come to if anybody suffers from pancytopenia whatever may be the cause what may be the clinical presentations so clinical presentations clinical presentations of pancytopenia as in pancytopenia there is decreased rbc so there will be anemia so first symptoms of anemia symptoms of anemia like pallor fatigue palpitation effort intolerance etc then due to decreased wbc there will be frequent infection and patient will develop frequent fever so frequent fever and usually we have seen if anti cancer drug is given to a patient and if it leads to pancytopenia there will be leukopenia and patient develops oral ulcer oral ulcer oral ulcerations as there is decreased platelet there is thrombocytopenia so in pancytopenia there is bleeding manifestations bleeding manifestations there are days i have told you here sub leukemic acute leukemia what is this i have told you sub leukemic acute leukemia is associated with pancytopenia now come to what is sub leukemic acute leukemia Rodents, we know leukemia is the neoplastic proliferation of hemopoietic stem cell, and usually in all leukemia there is leukocytosis. So in all leukemia there is leukocytosis. TLC is increased, and in all leukemia there is atypical or immature cell in peripheral blood. Immature cells. more than 15% in blood and in bone marrow so in leukemia there is leukocytosis in kist tlc and bone marrow and in blood more than 15% blood cell or immature cell this is leukemia what about sub leukemic leukemia in case of sub leukemic acute leukemia it is an acute leukemia it is acute leukemia it is acute leukemia and in this leukemia there is blast cells in peripheral blood film and in bone marrow there is blast cells either lymphoblast or myeloblast so there is it is an acute leukemia and there is blast cells as it is leukemia we should get increased number of tlc but in sub leukemic acute leukemia although it is acute leukemia although there is blood cells the total count of wbc is within normal limits or below the normal limits so tlc does not show leukocytosis rather leukopenia rather leukopenia or tlc within normal range if acute leukemia with normal tlc or acute leukemia with leukopenia that acute leukemia is called sub leukemic acute leukemia that leukemia is called sub leukemic acute leukemia so in sub leukemic acute leukemia there is blood cells it is acute leukemia but the total count of wbc is normal range within normal range or there is 
leukopenia. Now come to laboratory diagnosis of pancytopenia. Laboratory diagnosis of pancytopenia. We have to do blood examination. bone marrow examination and sometimes on the depending on the patient on the depending on the patient we have to do urine for Benz Jones protein for the Benz Jones protein now come to blood examination first We have to do hemoglobin estimation, it will be decreased. We have to do TLC, it will be decreased. We have to do DLC, it is normal distribution. Then we have to do bleeding time as there is thrombocytopenia it will be prolonged bleeding time is prolonged we have to do clotting time it is normal because it is not a case of coagulation disorder then we have to do total platelet count it will show thrombocytopenia so count of double platelet will be less than 1.5 lakh then we have to do peripheral blood film PBF peripheral blood film what will be peripheral blood findings RBC series RBC series as in pancytopenia RBC W platelet all are decreased so RBC series cells show decreased population of RBC in blood film decreased population of RBC in blood film then WBC series for the findings show leukopenia and platelet platelet is decreased in number decreased in number in the peripheral blood film so RBC decreased population in peripheral blood film WC leukopenia platelet decreased in number Now come to bone marrow examination. Dear audience, if the cause of pancytopenia is a plastic anemia, the bone marrow will show the fissures or findings of a plastic anemia. If it is a case of if multiple myeloma is a cause of pancytopenia we can say if the cause of pancytopenia is aplastic anemia so bone marrow will show fissures of aplastic anemia if cause is multiple myeloma if the cause is multiple myeloma, what will be the bone marrow findings? Bone marrow will show bone marrow shows sheets of sheets of immature 
plasma cells or sheets of myeloma cells in case of multiple myeloma causing aplastic anemia. If, if cause is metastatic tumor, metastatic tumor of bone, if the cause is metastatic tumor of bone, the bone marrow will show atypical cells or cancer cells. So, bone marrow shows cancer cells. If the cause is myelofibrosis, if the cause is myelofibrosis, then bone marrow shows area of fibrosis with decreased hemopoietic element. So, this is the bone marrow findings and another examination urine for benzones protein. Dear audience, you know if anybody suffers from multiple myeloma, in about 40 percent cases, if we do urine for benzones protein, then we can get benzones protein in urine in about 40 percent cases of multiple myeloma. So, benzones protein according to the name of scientist, it is nothing but light chain, light chain of immunoglobulin. So, light chain of immunoglobulin either lambda or kappa, this is called benzones protein. It was first invented by scientist benzones and if light stain is found in blood in multiple myeloma, the light stain due to its uh, lighter heavier uh, lighter molecular weight, it can passes through the kidney and comes in urine and we can detect the light stains in of immunoglobulin in urine as benzones protein. This is all about the pancytopenia. Thanks all.